Greetings friends around the world. This auditorium was known to the members of the Worldwide Church of God as the House of God. It was dedicated to the great God by Mr. Herbert W. Armstrong, who officially broke ground for Ambassador Auditorium on January the 14th, 1972. The building was dedicated on May the 6th in 1974. Mr. Armstrong stated, at that time, this auditorium was made possible by the special gifts of the members of the Worldwide Church of God as a monument to the honor and the glory of the great God. Today that era of the church is gone and in its place we have an age that is defined in the book of Judges in the following way, a different era. In those days there was no king in Israel, no leader. Every man or woman did that which was right in his own eyes. The book of Revelation calls this age Laodicean. The Laodiceans is a scattered church of Christians who have become independent of Jesus Christ. They have shut him out of their lives by a self-centered and self-sufficient lifestyle. Jesus Christ wants to have a relationship with the Laodicean church, but they have locked him out. He is standing outside their door knocking. Will any answer him? This church has been scattered across the entire earth. And there is one vehicle that this church is using to maintain its divisive format. And that vehicle is the internet. This powerful means of mass and instant communication has also given rise to many skeptics and scoffers of the church of God. These people have risen mainly from ex-members of the Worldwide Church of God, and there are some evangelicals as well, and even some spouses of ex-members have become scoffers and skeptics. These often disgruntled and at times unhappy people are given an equal voice on various blogs on the internet to vent their displeasure and their disagreement of the Church of God and specifically of Mr. Herbert Armstrong. And of course, those who sincerely uphold those doctrines are demeaned as well. Most of these skeptics hide behind a pseudo name or simply title themselves as anonymous. You know what God's word tells us about these people? In 2 Peter 3 and verse 3 it says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. Notice what Peter says. In these last days, these scoffers long to be recognized by their scorn. The book of Jude acknowledges this. Notice what he says about scoffers. Verse 17, But beloved, remember the words which were spoken before of the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there shall be mockers in the last day, who shall walk after their own ungodly lusts, these be they who separate themselves sensually, having not the Spirit. And of course, these lustful scoffers who hate the doctrines that God restored through Herbert W. Armstrong will say, well, he was wrong with his prophecies. And the scripture says, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Dear friends, we are living in the age that Jesus Christ will say to these self-sufficient people, to these scoffers and skeptics, I will spew you from my mouth. And he will spew them right into the great tribulation. These are individuals who have either lost or have never understood why Jesus Christ said he would build his church. If you are a member of the church of God, who has been cast out from one of these churches of God, or you left some group where the ministry or the leader continually harassed you for money, or the way you dressed, don't turn against the established truths or the doctrines that Jesus Christ put into his church. Don't turn against them. Don't allow scoffers to turn you away. Go back to the basics of your calling. Get back to Jesus Christ and his teaching. 
You know what Jesus says to you? He says to you, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Don't listen to scoffers and scorners of God's truth. Don't listen to people who tell you that they want your money. They're just unhappy people and are going to be shocked into the reality of what they are at the return of Jesus Christ. Are you willing, you willing to tremble at Jesus Christ's words? Don't allow any man to turn you away from Jesus Christ or God the Father. You can be confident in Jesus Christ. Paul tells us, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will not give up on you. Never. So remember, we are living in the time that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? That beautiful building that was known as the house of God is no more. But God's house, God's temple is still active and alive. As Paul told the Corinthians, Know you not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Yes, the church of God today is the temple of God. God does not forsake us. The good work that He has done in us, He will finish. Therefore, do not forsake your God. Do not forsake Him. Do not walk away and leave God out of your life. Turn back to Him. For more information about our ministry, and the work that we are doing, write to MV at VigilantCOG or visit our website, thevigilantcog.org. Until next time, this is Michael Venish saying, goodbye friends.